All right, welcome back everyone. And in this video, we are continuing our mechanics of ser material series and and dealing with normal strain. And and uh, strain is really essentially the deformation that accompanies a stress, right? You know, you're stressed, so you feel strained. You talk about feelings all you want. Oh, I feel so strained because I have so much stress. Ah, you know, it's like terms we use every day, but we're gonna use them in an engineering sense. You know, if you like look at a rubber band and you apply a force to that rubber band, you can see it elongate, and then you can even see the cross section shrinking, which is you know something called Poisson's ratio that we're gonna deal with later. And um, but sometimes a lot of times you can't see this deformation. You know, when you put books on a bookshelf, you can't really see the bookshelf sagging unless you have lots of books and you overloaded it and maybe you bought the bookshelf from ikea <laughs> the cheap one the billy bookcase right anyway so the so here you know the the idea is that we we want to look at the deformations associated with various loading uh and and those loadings cause stress and those stresses induce strains and sometimes we want to look at it backwards we want to be able to experimentally measure the strains and see what kind of stresses are, are caused and find out whether or not it exceeds an allowable limit okay and, that, and just like in stresses just like there are two types of stresses there are two types of strains there are normal strains that are accompanied by nor normal stresses normal strains normal strains and shear strains from shear stresses, okay? And here in this video, we're gonna deal with normal strains mostly. We're gonna describe them, and then hopefully you can figure out or explain how to calculate them. And uh, um, and the shear strains we'll deal with another video. But let's take, for instance, an axially loaded bar, okay? So here I've got this, let me take or an axial member or a bar here that's fixed to a wall like this right here. Like that, and it's got some length, say it has a length here of L0, and then I, I'm going to apply slowly a static load. I'm going to apply very slowly, quasi-static, if you were to do this experimentally right here, right? I'm going to apply this very slowly, a load here that causes a deformation, okay, that stretches this, this bar here. So here, bam, this P, I have this applied load here, and I end up with this final length, this final length. LF, we'll call that the final length, and you would say the change in deformation, we'll call this little delta, lowercase delta, the change in deformation is equal to the final length minus L0, and that would be indicated by, on here, this distance, delta, the change in length, okay? And the norm, the definition of the normal strain, or the strain here, is not, it's not just it deformed this distance, but it's going to be kind of the rate or the change in length per unit length. Okay, so here, this normal strain, normal strain, which we use the symbol epsilon, which is typically, again, uses the symbol epsilon here. This is my, my the way I write Greek epsilon right here, is the change in length divided by the original length right here. And this is my normal strain. And the way I've done this for an axially loaded bar, this gives us a, a, a really good feel for the average uh, strain across this element. But sometimes, you know, our, our loading is not so concise. It's not always just one direction. And what happens is that, you know, you're loaded, you, you're, you have loading in multiple directions going on, and, and you have this uh, deformation. You know, just think of a ball or a beam that's being loaded transversely and pulled and torqued. Okay, all at once. And so you want to be able to evaluate the longitudinal strain or the normal strain, excuse me, the normal strain at a point. Okay. And so in order to do that, we look at line segments. And so it let's let's take for instance, I will draw, let's say, a line segment here. So here I want to study this line segment. I'll call this point A, point B. It has an initial length here, this line of delta S. Okay. This delta S. And and this is, and really, you know, on a, on a large structure, this, the distance between A and B to us would look like a dot, okay, a really tiny dot on a structure. And so, but I, I'm magnifying it here just for, you know, for the purpose of seeing it. And, and what happens when I apply this load right here is that point A will have, which will have been here, will move down a certain distance to, to a new position here which I will call, I will say, move the distance u, okay? And this will be this new 
A prime. That's this new location. And then point B might move, you know, it used to be, oh, excuse me for making it so, here, let me, let me correct this a little bit just to make sure that we make this clearer. So let's say point A, the new one is right here. We'll call that delta U. Okay, I'm sorry, U, a distance U right here, okay? This distance U, and this is A prime, this new A prime right here. And then point B moves down a distance U plus another distance, okay? So here is the original point B location. This is the new B prime. Here is that U, and then here is this other distance, which I will call delta u oops delta u and, and we would say here and here's my my and this new line segment right here delta s prime right there okay that delta s prime and i would say well the strain the normal strain that at of of this this region of this location this line segment is going to be the just like we before, the change in length, which will be the delta S prime minus delta S over the original length delta S, which in terms of these delta U's and U's, this delta S prime, so if you look at it, it's really just this delta U divided by delta S, okay? And this would be my average uh, normal strain for segment AB. And really, because we're studying, you know, large bodies, and when I say body, you know, I'm talking about like a beam or it could be a computer monitor, whatever, right? Something that has an applied load to it, a building, okay? And how it's, a lot of times we want to look at a, an, at, a, at a point, at a specific point on the, on the body. And so that means that this line segment becomes infinitely small. It goes small, right? It gets small. It gets closer and closer to zero. So this delta S gets closer and closer to zero. So, you know, as you can imagine, there's some limit as delta S goes to zero of delta U over delta S, which becomes a derivative du over ds. And that says that this is my normal strain at a point, at point of body. But this derivative application is is really we're not going to be using this until later, okay? A little bit later, um, uh, so much, a little bit later on. Right now, we're going to be sticking with kind of the, this this definite. Like I would say, this is probably the most useful definition and the best way to calculate our normal strain of of a segment, a point, okay? And when the 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 strain is positive or greater than zero, we're going to say that that's associated with an elongation. And when the strain, the normal strain is less than zero or negative, we're going to associate that with contraction in terms of sign convention. Another thing you always want to be aware of are the units. And the units for this, if you look at this, is dimensionless, okay? So the units, units of normal strain, units, it's dimensionless. And what's typically used, dimen, dimensionless, dimensionless, and what's typically used is really, it's common to write, you know, the units as, uh, you know, length over length. So things would be like meter per meter or inch per inch, or um, uh, that would be it. Uh, sometimes this thing is expressed as a percentage uh, a lot of times, because these these strain values are so small, you, you might use. Uh, so let's let's take for instance a number. Let's say uh, let's say you you have done something, you've done some work, you had a strain gauge on on a beam or something that was loaded, and you found a strain value of uh, 480 times 10 to the minus six. Uh, Dimensionless, some number, 480 times 10 to the minus 6, okay? This was a strain. This was a normal strain. You could say this is the same as 480 times 10 to the minus 6 inch per inch. Or you could say it's the same as 480 times 10 to the minus 6 meter per meter or millimeter per meter. Okay? Or, or 480 times 10 to the minus 6 meter per meter. If you wanted to express this as a percentage, this would be, you know, you just, you're going to multiply this by 100, okay? This would end up being 
and again, this is all equivalent. And sometimes, because this 10 to the minus 6 actually occurs a lot, okay, the, the, a lot of times it's even expressed this way, we might say it's 480 micro inch per inch. And my, this micro is just another way to say 10 to the minus 6. Or we might say 480 micrometers per meter. Or, or, or micro strain, I'm sorry, micro. And so another way to call this is micro strain. Okay, so that's that's just another way to do it. And these are some of the units. And hopefully you got a feel for normal strain, how it's calculated at least. And then, you know, we'll do some example problems later on. All right, and get ready for the next video on shear strain. Woo! Laters.